Uh, hi everybody, Physics Ninja. Today we're going to look at rocket propulsion. So we've got a rocket traveling through space far away from any other mass, so there is no force of gravity acting on it. The only force that's going to make this rocket accelerate has to do to the combustion inside the rocket. And what happens is there's going to be some mass ejected in one direction, so there's a force acting on that mass due to this uh, combustion. And if there's a force acting on mass in one direction, there's an equal and opposite force acting on the rocket rocket in the other direction. So we want to find what that force is because that force is what makes the rocket accelerate. This is what we call the thrust force, okay? And it's given by equation one here in the limit where there's no force of gravity. Uh, once you know the force acting on the rocket, then you might be interested to know, well, how fast is the rocket going to move if there's a thrust force acting on it? So that's the second equation that we're going to look at here. Uh, it depends on the rate of change of the mass. You can see the thrust force depends on this guy, dm dt. And it also depends on this other quantity, which is how fast is it ejecting stuff from the back of the rocket, right? That's called our exhaust speed. All right, so let's have a look at both of these equations. A look at the derivation using conservation of linear momentum. Okay, and then after we'll apply both of those equations to two simple problems, just so we can practice plugging numbers into the equations. Okay, let's get started. All right, so let's have a look at uh, what's going on over here. So we're first gonna start with our rocket traveling through space. It has a mass m and some velocity v, and this is at time t. Okay, so that means that at this first point over here, it has some uh, momentum. Right, so let me go ahead and write that. And this would be the velocity as measured with someone over here in my coordinate system. Okay, I define the positive x direction to be pointing to the right over here. All right, so momentum, at least at this time, t would simply be the mass of the object multiplied by its velocity, and that's easy. Okay, well, that has to be equal to the momentum at any other time. So let's look at the rocket a little bit further in time at some time t plus delta t later, okay? First of all, it's going to be moving a little bit fast there. And what else? It's also going to have a little bit less mass, right? Because it's burnt up some of the fuel and it's ejected some of the fuel out of the back of the rocket. So its mass has actually decreased. So I'm gonna write this as m plus delta m. And one thing I've noticed here, if, I, if the mass actually decreases, it means that delta m here has to be less than zero. Okay, if delta m is less than zero, then you're going to see that the mass after, or the mass at this time is going to be a little bit less than my initial mass. All right, so what else do we have? Uh, let's just keep the notation kind of the same here. Let me use just lowercase m, it's just going to be kind of cleaner. All right, and what we have now is we also have some fuel that's being ejected. Okay, now there's kind of two ways to write this, okay? I can either write it in terms of the velocity of the fuel as measured by this guy, okay? He would measure V fuel. It actually turns out it's probably a little bit better just to write it in terms of uh, how fast is that fuel moving relative to the rocket over here, okay? So this is actually what we call V exhaust. This is the exhaust speed, and it's relative to the rocket, okay? So that's really important. Okay, because this number is basically a constant, okay? The rocket at every time is just kind of throwing out mass, and that little bit of mass I'm calling uh, dm over here, okay? Uh, it's releasing a little bit of mass, and basically always at the same speed, okay? But the rocket is speeding up, right? So you're going to see that kind of this term here actually is going to get bigger as a function of time. Um, and eventually, that v is actually going to be bigger than the exhaust velocity, or the exhaust speed. Okay, so regardless, let's write down the total momentum of this system after. Since there's no external force, that momentum has to be conserved. Okay, so if we first look at the momentum of the rocket, well, what we'd have is a mass of the rocket is no longer m, it's going to be m plus delta m. Go ahead and write that. All right, and that has to be multiplied by the velocity. Well, hopefully that uh, velocity is increasing. Uh, v plus dv. Okay, so this first term right here, this is only for the rocket, right? We also need to account for the momentum of this ejected mass, okay? And that's moving in this opposite direction right here. So the way I would write that now would be minus, and it's moving at v fuel. And the mass of that little element is going to be dm. 
because we're only looking at a small increment of time later. All right, what we have to do now is you have to do a little bit of math. So we're going to multiply through, eliminate the brackets up here. So that's pretty straightforward. So you're going to have four terms here. You're going to have a MV. You're going to have a VDM. What else? You're going to have MDV. And then the last term or the last two terms here, you're going to have uh, DM, DV. And then you still have all of this term. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to uh, introduce the uh, velocity of the fuel here. So velocity of the fuel I can write as the velocity of the rocket minus this exhaust speed. Okay, And all this gets multiplied by that element of mass. Okay, Again, for these last two terms here, what you can do is you can simplify that. So let's go one more step. I'm going to just rewrite all of these terms. Uh, dv plus dm dv. All right, now we carry this out. Now we have minus v dm. And then both of those turn into a positive. The exhaust uh, speed multiplied by that element of mass. And on this side, I still have mv. That was my initial momentum. All right, now we're going to take out our red pen and we're going to look at terms that are the same and terms that are uh, can be grouped together. So we have mv on both sides. So you could simplify that. What else? Here I have positive uh, VDM, and here I have negative, the same term, right? So I can get rid of that term. And now what else are we left with? So now we're left with three terms over here. Let's go ahead and write those. Okay. So we have zero equals to, we're almost done, MDV uh, plus uh, DMDV. And then the last term is plus this exhaust speed multiplied by that element of mass. All right, now there's one more simplification that happens here. It involves this term right here, okay? Since this involves two infinitesimal quantities, all right? Remember, all of these things are assumed to be really small. DM and DV are kind of really, really small, okay? So if I'm multiplying two small terms, um, that definitely is going to be smaller than any of those because these only involve only one of those infinitesimal numbers, so what we do here is we're going to simplify. We're going to neglect this term. Okay, so although I'm crossing it out here, let's make a comment over here saying that I'm really just uh, neglecting, okay, because it's small. Um, all right, we're just about done now. We only have two terms left. Uh, let's go ahead and on the next page and clean this up and see what we get. All right, the last thing I'm going to do now is just rearrange this. I'm going to bring MDV on the other side. It becomes negative, but I'll just write the negative sign right here. All right, not bad. All right, remember dm is, um, okay, dm is that little element of mass here that I'm ejecting from the back of the rocket. And now what we want to do now is simply divide both sides by dt. And again, here we're assuming that this vx is constant, so dividing through by dt doesn't matter. Okay, because it's a constant term, you're kind of just taking it out. All right, one thing you can notice over here is that this term over here is mass... And this guy is a rate of change of velocity. This is an acceleration. Well, this whole term over here looks like a, a net force. That's Newton's second law. Okay. Uh, Newton's second law says it's equal to on this side. So this is the force acting on the rocket right here. Okay. And this is actually what we call the thrust. That's our thrust force. So it involves two terms, right? It says that the thrust force is actually proportional to how fast we're ejecting mass from the back of the rocket. Okay? What is the, right? What's the speed of the stuff that's coming out of the back of the rocket? And it's also proportional to the mass, right? The rate of mass change of the rocket as a function of time. Okay, now if you're worried about this negative sign here, you don't have to worry about it because remember that dm over dt is going to be less than zero, right? dm is how much the mass changes, how much it's reduced as a function of time. Okay, so at the end, we're going to get a positive value here for uh, this force. Okay, so let's go ahead now and look at how you would actually use this in order to calculate how fast is the rocket actually going to move, right? We basically have an expression for the net force, which means we have an expression for the acceleration of the rocket. Now all we have to do is use a bit of calculus in order to calculate what the speed is. Let's go on the next page. 
All right, so let me just write this down then. That means that the acceleration, starting from here, this is my net force over here, equals to this, which is my thrust. All right, that means that my acceleration, the acceleration of the rocket, all you have to do then is simply, that's our DVDT, right? DVDT uh, has to be just simply bring the mass at the bottom over here. So it's minus VX, my exhaust speed, and DM over DT. Okay, so this is kind of also an important equation over here. Now that we know the acceleration of the rocket. All right, now think, let's think about how we would actually get the speed if we have an acceleration like this. Um, it's pretty straightforward, actually. Uh, what you end up doing here is, actually, let me start off with the expression I had uh, even before I introduced or I divided through by dt. So I actually had this. mdv is equal to minus vx dm. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is just bring the mass on the bottom. All right, something like this. And now this is it. All you have to do now is if Vx is constant, okay, let's introduce some prime notation here just so when we integrate at the end, we're going to get back our speed. But this is it. You can integrate this directly. And you want to integrate this from some initial velocity when I'm moving over here to some final velocity V at some later time. And now I want to integrate again. I'm going to be changing the mass, right? So I'm going to start at some initial mass and I'm going to end up here at some final mass M. All right, so the left-hand side of this, pretty straightforward. This just becomes V minus V zero. That's not too complicated. Equals minus my exhaust velocity. And now this integration over here, this is the natural log of, again, it's M prime. And it's evaluated between both of those limits, between the M0 and my final mass M. All right, all you need to do is simply substitute that in there. So you get uh, Vx, the natural log. And again, if I take the properties of the natural log, this simply becomes the ratio of both of those. Okay. If I want to have it kind of in a slightly different form, I could uh, invert the fraction over here. And I could absorb this negative sign. So the final equation that I have is that my velocity, actually, let me even write it slightly differently. Let's just say that the final velocity uh, is equal to my initial velocity and plus my exhaust speed multiplied by the natural log of this fraction over here. So M0 divided by M. All right, so this is kind of our final result that we were looking for. We have two important equations here in the red boxes, okay? call this equation one and equation two. So you see that the initial mass M0 is going to be the biggest, right? Before I put the thrusters on, I have some initial mass. And then later on, right, when I have less mass, you see this number here, uh, M0 divided by M is going to be greater than one. So I'll be able to evaluate this with my calculator. Um, again, this is this relative speed of the mass that's ejected here, that's the exhaust speed, this tends to be a pretty large number, right? Because the mass that's being ejected is going out at high speeds. Okay. And there we go. So let's practice with a couple problems on how we would calculate uh, acceleration and speed for a rocket in space. All right, so here's example one. Let's just work on calculating the acceleration of a rocket here. So it says you're traveling through space and you turn on the rocket engine for one second. Okay, that's kind of important. Uh, the rocket ejects uh, some mass and they say it's 1% of its mass uh, with a relative speed of 2,500. Okay, so let's write down a couple quantities that we know now. Uh, again, this is this 2,500 is what the exhaust speed is, right? That's 2,500. Uh, meters per second. That's, again, if someone is standing on the rocket, they see that mass is being ejected here with a speed of 2,500 meters per second. All right, and we're doing 1% of its mass. Well, that means that my change of mass then is going to be, well, it's going to be 1% less, right? So the change in mass is something like this, right? The change in mass is negative, right? And it's 1% of my initial mass. Okay, hopefully this guy makes sense. 
Uh, and remember now we're looking for the acceleration. Okay, so our acceleration equation was uh, negative V exhaust divided by the mass, just call this the initial mass, and multiplied by this other term, right? dm over dt. Okay, so this is the rate at which mass is changing per time. Well, we know it for one second, so we're gonna approximate that as uh, Vx m0, and this is kind of delta m over delta t. Okay, all right, so now we just have to substitute in all our values, so we have minus 2,500. My initial mass of the rocket I don't know, uh, but all I know is that I'm removing 1% of its initial mass, so this is 1%. And again, I'm doing that in how much time I'm doing this in a time interval equal to one second. Okay, so now we can cancel out a couple things. Uh, my initial mass cancels out. Uh, cancel out a couple zeros here. And you're left with that the initial acceleration, uh, those negative signs cancel out. You're left with an acceleration of 25 uh, meters per second squared. Okay. Um, so pretty straightforward application. So the rocket after one second uh, the speed of the rocket then is, is roughly 25 meters per second, right, after one second. All right, let's practice calculating the speed of the rocket. So here's kind of a problem. Assume that uh, three-fourths of the initial mass of the rocket in that previous example where we had the acceleration was, at least in the first second, right, in the first second. So delta T equals to 1. Um, so imagine that three-fourths of that mass is actually just fuel, okay? So that the final mass of the rocket is this, okay? It's the initial mass divided by four because you've burnt three-fourths of it, okay? And then again, we're going to assume that we're constantly kind of uh, burning fuel at a constant rate, and we're going to do this for 90 seconds, okay? What's the speed of the rocket? Okay, to calculate the speed of the rocket, uh, the only thing you need to know is what was the initial speed of the rocket, plus, again, my exhaust velocity multiplied by the natural log of uh, that initial mass divided by the mass uh, at whatever time I want to evaluate it at, okay? So in this case here, let's just assume that we start at rest, okay? So put zero here, and what else did we have? We had 2,500 for the exhaust velocity, and now we have natural log of my initial mass, and now after 90 seconds, I've burnt three-fourths of the fuel, so I'm only left with m0 over 4, okay? So the final speed then is just simply 2,500. Those m0s cancel out, and I'm left with 2,500 multiplied by the natural log of 4. Okay, you put that in your calculator, you should get like 3,400 and, I don't know, uh, 66 I think I got. All right, so that would be the final velocity if you started from rest, okay? So just say we started from rest. All right, so that's kind of an example of how you would use this second equation here. The only thing you need to know is what is the final mass of the rocket, okay? Again, but we are assuming, just like in the previous example, that uh, we're burning stuff at a constant rate, okay? So our uh, rate of change of mass then is always the same. All right, uh, anyway, hopefully you've... Uh, got a, at least a flavor of how to use these two rocket propulsion equations. Uh, thanks for watching.